thing. Hi everyone, welcome to this open research about online learning and the fun. I am Alessandro Cada from the Open University. I'm a member of the Rampus, We Explore Fun, and the leader of the RRI Data Network about open science in open education. So we, um, I would like to start with this um, quote from Paulo Freire, which is the inspiration of my work. Teaching and learning cannot take place outside of research, built and joy. This is from the Pedagogy of Autonomy. So fun is an important part of a human lived experience. However, its meaning is underexplored by the literature. So Olaf project, which is about online learning and fun, objectives are to increase awareness about the ways of learning, which uh, refers to epistemic views and fun, to support students' success in higher education. Our specific aims, we will, we will generate open database with open reflective tool, co-create open participatory research based on learners' needs, and raise the number of projects with open science to enhance online learning and the fun. And of course, innovating curriculum with open policies. So um, our work is now started in the UK uh, during the outbreak uh, in March. We engaged more than 4,000 students and 551 joined as volunteers in our study. Then during the outbreak, the peak in Brazil, in South America, we developed, this, we developed the second study in June, and July with 2,500 open learners. And we had 446 participants. And currently we are developing studies in Portugal, in Spain, uh, more um, studies in Brazil and in Indonesia. So uh, pandemic is our main concern. And uh, based on various reports from the uh, World Bank, OECD, UNESCO, we can see that there are various factors affecting the educational systems. In particular, the high drop rates and the gap between low and the high achievers. That map is uh, fresh data you can get from now today, but I, this is related to, yes, two days ago, November 16. So you can see Brazil, India, United States really affected by the pandemic. So we need to think about what are the higher education priorities. It is about student access, retention, attainment, and progression. So we would like to see this framework, yes, which we are focused now. What is the value of the fund? in online learning during the COVID-19. What are the factors and recommendations to support students' enjoyment for promoting higher access, retention, attainment, and progression? And for that, we are bringing these four components, open education to ensure inclusion, open science to increase the sense of belonging. I'm talking about open participatory science science with and for society. Open schooling means partnerships and flexibility in, uh, supported by open policy to integrate flexible learning, lifelong learning with employability and to shape the desirable future, sustainable world. And that is part of our methodology, which is underpinned by responsible research and innovation which is an important term created by the European Commission to align all the scientific developments with the societal needs. So RRI, which is our approach to explore fun in online learning, we have these four categories and these six components. But I would like to highlight how we are using that principles to design our work. 
So we are thinking about responsive, responsive open research projects developed by anyone interested in exploring learning and fun. Also engaging diverse participants in education, not just from university, but also from uh, curriculum developers, entrepreneurs, policy makers, um, the community, educa educators, and open learners. And also using open reflexivity tool with open data, open findings, and recommendations. So to show that cycle in a very practical way, ex with examples about which technologies we are using, about artifacts, I have this complex image. So number one, we started this work with the policy reports. Um, Professor Sherry started the previous studies to explore epistemic views of learners, how they know that they learn, how do they think they learn. And then this is from Talis reports, which is about uh, teaching and the learning international survey. And he developed the Indonesian uh, study in, about inclusive education. So in Olaf, we are using WordPress and WhatsApp with the open network for researchers. And they are um, now joined to use our survey, adapt, extend, and translate for their countries. So our preliminary findings is always published in open articles, very accessible, easy, understandable for the public. So we use the open learning to, to share preliminary findings with this Qualtrics survey, all linked, and we published scientific papers. So we are collecting now a, a, a set of scientific papers that will feed new policies for online learning and fun. So to show a little bit about our instruments, this is from the research, as I told you, and it's kind of a self-reflective survey with the Likert scale to understand the epistemic beliefs. How, they, how do students think they learn? With a social constructivism approach, traditional constructivist, banking like a transmissive, and how they connect the fun with these uh, beliefs. So we analyze that findings in Qualtrics, SPSS, and any people, because they also describe the online learning and the fun in a narrative. So when we start to use the Qualtrics, we could see that a large number of learners, they believe that learning should involve fun. If you combine, agree, uh, somehow, somewhat agree and strongly agree, you can get more than 90 or more than 89%, as you can see in green and blue colors. However, there is a number of participants that indicated that the fun can get in the way of learning. So, as we can see in this uh, fourth graphic, yes, around the 16%. So when we start to analyze the narratives, what the students thinking about the fun in learning, we could see lots of positive words. This is a cloud word in Qualtrics. Fun is connected to motivation, enjoyment, engagement, interest, related to life, feel better, great, no stress or pressure, very connected to well-being, and performance, like knowledge, experience, achievement. Then we use the code analysis to understand what is the relation between that fun and online learning. And we can see more than uh, around 79 categories in any vivo and grouped in seven codes. Fun was linked to activities, content, teaching, tutorials, learning materials, with the positive views like engaging, helpful, social, effective, but also negative opinions like forced, fun, uh, unrelated fun activities. So, to understand a little bit more about a student's feeling, we use the sentimental analysis 
analysis in any vivo. And as you can see in these nine groups, all organized by any vivo, of course, we had to revise. We can see a lot of you know, neutral comments, but um, positive in many categories. However, three of them, like tutorials, fun activities, and the group work, the, it's not uh, like negative or mixed views are higher than positive. Okay, so we then use the uh, SPSS to uh, with the P, uh, principal component analysis to understand um, groups to explain this phenomena. What are the students' epistemic beliefs and how these are related to fun? So if you can see, we can see like uh, three main components. The green one with many variables, it shows that the fun is very connected to social constructivist learning. In gray, there is no fun in traditional transmissive learning. And in red, you can see that the fun disturbs constructivist learning. So we combine these variables to create three indexes to understand fun and connect to their learning approach. Then, because we could, you know, reward our database, we were looking differently to our qualitative data. And we end up with three things relating to positive value of fun and the relationship of fun and online learning, which I don't have time to go in details, but this is all presented in the journal paper. What I'd like to let you know is that because these myth mixed methods analysis, we were able to understand better what it means when you see that uh, learners, they think that fun is unnecessary because they are not expecting, not needed, affecting individual productivity, and they think that the learning is about the transmission, is getting content, and is getting uh, activities done. Then you have a constructivist learning, which is more about solving problems, and it requires time, and the must, fun must be sensible and related to the learning. And then you can see social constructivist learning, which enables learners to connect and the learning with the others. Emancipatory learning is about the participation, engagement, and the learning life. Optimum, optimal learning is about feeling good, reduce stress, enjoy the experience, enjoy, make the effort and achieve. Learn best. So this is our database. We decided to combine all categories from SPSS, from any vivo to extract recommendations. And then we also put that integrated combined database back to any vivo to understand how our recommendations are aligned with the participants' needs, which you can see in blue and the light blue. So I would like now to spend my final minutes with the recommendations. We, to interpret the data, we uh, use the lenses of important scholars. Paulo Freire related to social cultural learning to understand that kind of fun, emancipatory fun, which is about feeling empowered, reflect, act, intervene, improving, on, improving ourselves. Optimal fun with Mihaly, it's about feeling good. Then Piaget, that individual fun, very intrinsic, is about feeling productive. And Vygotsky, social construct constructivist learning, is about feeling supported, talking, collaborate with the other, and share experience. So, we used that uh, butterfly to group our recommendations. And we developed three sets of recommendations, which we used a method which is called the consensual review method. We uh, engaged um, a learner, a educator, and a scholar to analyze the recommendations. So 
for learners, we provide the seven, it's study with autonomy, flexibility, good time to enjoy work-life balance. Applying learning to real world communication that may, may be supportive. It's very important to be open-minded, to interact with the others, enjoy fun activities that you feel motivated, focused and engaged. Involve, uh, find your involvement, interest in your studies. Identify alternatives if you feel anxious or bored. So this is about the learners. For teaching staff, we uh, provided this um, set as well of uh, recommendations, focusing on provide activities for the students to select, to choose freely, investigate students' preferences and the ways of learning, allow students to discuss and define the common interests, plan very carefully the icy breaking, activities that are fun must be connected, part of learning, and this must be explicit for them. Enhance students' engagement with a variety of styles of activities that are useful for their lives. So, this is about teaching stuff. And then for course teams, we use the students, based on students' needs, learners in general. The first one is about create personalized learning environments with adaptive fun materials to help students with the different needs and preferences. Support them uh, to, with the experience that they uh, can feel engaged, gain skills, at their own pace, including knowledge. And they must visualize that progress, like feeling happy that they are achieving, they are able to see that. And, oh, sorry. And then a variety of tasks, very interactive, including games, cards, audio diagrams, quizzes, podcasts, and a balanced mix of, um, we call the uh, individual and group activities all very connected to real life. So, and to finish this presentation, I have this short video. Effective and engaging learning with the fun is necessary to empower learners to shape a sustainable and enjoyable world. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Alexander. We have a couple of comments and questions. Um, one is that everybody is very impressed with the quality and quantity of your data. So uh, big cheer for you. And uh, one uh, question from Matilda is how would we apply the butterfly of fun to assess or evaluate a course? And is it culturally transferable? Yes, you are very welcome for that, because now we are thinking of all about these interesting questions, how to apply the butterfly in assessment, particularly because there are many kinds of assessment, formative assessment, co-assessment, summative assessment. So we needed to understand that assessment is very connected to evaluation, and evaluation means value, give value for the students' learning. And that is connected also with the students' satisfaction, enjoyment, achievement. So if we can understand the fun element in all these different models and the types of um, learning, then uh, it's really possible to see the correlation or, or examine, investigate the correlation about the fun for the students, their awareness about what means fun for them with their achievement. And this will help not only learners, but the course teams, teaching staff. So we are welcoming any researcher that would like to join our network with more questions and we'll be providing also guidance about how to use open science and it should develop also policy at local or global level. Okay, thank you so much. Unfortunately, we're out of time. 
Uh, stop recording, please.